Mains electricity as it is known in the UK and Canada, US terms include grid power, wall power, and domestic power is the general purpose alternating current AC electric power supply. It is the form of electrical power that is delivered to homes and businesses, and it is the form of electrical power that consumers use when they plug domestic appliances, televisions and electric lamps into wall outlets. The two principal properties of the electric power supply, voltage and frequency, differ between regions. A voltage of nominally 230 volts and a frequency of 50 Hz is used in Europe, most of Africa, most of Asia, much of South America and Australia. In North America, the most common combination is 120 volts and a frequency of 60 Hz. Other voltages exist, and some countries may have, for example, 230 volts but 60 Hz. This is a concern to travelers, since portable appliances designed for one voltage and frequency combination may not operate with, or may even be destroyed by another. The use of different and incompatible plugs and sockets in different regions and countries provides some protection from accidental use of appliances with incompatible voltage and frequency requirements. Topic. Terminology In the U.S., mains electric power is referred to by several names including household power, household electricity, house current, power line, domestic power, wall power, line power, AC power. City power, street power. In the UK, mains electric power is generally referred to as the mains. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Power systems. For a list of voltages, frequencies, and wall plugs by country, see mains electricity by country. Worldwide, many different mains power systems are found for the operation of household and light commercial electrical appliances and lighting. The different systems are primarily characterized by the voltage, frequency, plugs and sockets, receptacles or outlets, earthing system, grounding protection against overcurrent damage e.g., due to short circuit, electric shock, and fire hazards parameter tolerances, all these parameters vary among regions. The voltages are generally in the range 100 to 240 volts always expressed as root mean square voltage. The two commonly used frequencies are 50 Hz and 60 Hz. Single phase or three phase power is most commonly used today, although two phase systems were used early in the 20th century. Foreign enclaves, such as large industrial plants or overseas military bases, may have a different standard voltage or frequency from the surrounding areas. Some city areas may use standards different from that of the surrounding countryside, e.g., in Libya. Regions in an effective state of anarchy may have no central electrical authority, with electric power provided by incompatible private sources. Many other combinations of voltage and utility frequency were formerly used, with frequencies between 25 Hz and 133 Hz and voltages from 100 volts to 250 V. Direct current DC has been almost completely displaced by alternating current AC in public power systems, but DC was used especially in some city areas to the end of the 20th century. The modern combinations of 230 volts, 50 hertz and 120 volts, 60 hertz, listed in IEC 60038, did not apply in the first few decades of the 20th century and are still not universal. 
Industrial plants with three-phase power will have different, higher voltages installed for large equipment and different sockets and plugs, but the common voltages listed here would still be found for lighting and portable equipment. Topic: <laughs> Common uses of electricity. Electricity is used for lighting, heating, cooling, electric motors and electronic equipment. The U.S. Energy Information Administration has published Estimated U.S. residential electricity consumption by end use, for the year 2016 one includes televisions, set-top boxes, home theater systems, DVD players, and video game consoles. Two includes desktop and laptop computers, monitors, and networking equipment. Three does not include water heating. Four includes small electric devices, heating elements, exterior lights, outdoor grills, pool and spa heaters, backup electricity generators, and motors not listed above. Does not include electric vehicle charging, electronic appliances such as those in the televisions, computer and related equipment categories above, representing 9% of the total, typically use an AC to DC converter or AC adapter to power the device. This is often capable of operation over the approximate range of 100 volts to 250 volts and at 50 hertz to 60 hertz. The other categories are typically AC applications and usually have much more restricted input ranges. A study by the Building Research Establishment in the UK states that the existing 230 volt system is well suited to the future of electricity whether through design or Darwinian processes. Any current perceived weakness is generally a result of cost reduction and market forces rather than any fundamental technical difficulties. Questions as to whether there are alternatives to the existing 230 volts AC system are often overshadowed by legacy issues, the future smart agenda and cost in all but specific situations. Where opportunities do exist they are often for specific parts of the overall load and often small parts in terms of total demand. <laughs> <laughs> Building wiring In many countries, household power is single-phase electric power, with two or three wired contacts at each outlet. Neutral and line wires carry current and are defined as live parts. The line wire also known as phase, hot or active contact, and commonly, but technically incorrectly, as live, carries alternating current between the power grid and the household. The neutral wire completes the electrical circuit, remaining at a voltage in proximity to zero volts, by also carrying alternating current between the power grid and the household. The neutral is connected to the ground earth, and therefore has nearly the same electrical potential as the earth. This prevents the power circuits from increasing beyond earth voltage, such as when they are struck by lightning or become otherwise charged. The earth wire or ground connects the chassis of equipment to earth ground as a protection against faults electric shock, such as if the insulation on a hot wire becomes damaged and the bare wire comes into contact with the metal chassis or case of the equipment. Mix 230 volts, 400 volts three phase common in northern and central Europe or 230 volts single phase based household wiring in northern and central Europe. Residential electrical supply is commonly 400 volts three phase electric power, which gives 230 volts between any single phase and neutral. House wiring may be a mix of three phase and single phase circuits, but three phase residential use is rare in the UK. 
High power appliances such as kitchen stoves, water heaters and maybe household power heavy tools like log splitters may be supplied from the 400 volts three-phase power supply. Various earthing systems are used to ensure that the ground and neutral wires have zero voltage with respect to earth, to prevent shocks when touching grounded electrical equipment. In some installations, there may be two line conductors which carry alternating currents in a single phase three wire. Small portable electrical equipment is connected to the power supply through flexible cables these exist with either two or three insulated conductors terminated in a plug, which is inserted into a fixed receptacle socket. Larger household electrical equipment and industrial equipment may be permanently wired to the fixed wiring of the building. For example, in North American homes a window-mounted self-contained air conditioner unit would be connected to a wall plug, whereas the central air conditioning for a whole home would be permanently wired. Larger plug and socket combinations are used for industrial equipment carrying larger currents, higher voltages, or three-phase electric power. These are often constructed with tougher plastics and possess inherent weather-resistant properties needed in some applications. Circuit breakers and fuses are used to detect short circuits between the line and neutral or ground wires or the drawing of more current than the wires are rated to handle overload protection to prevent overheating and possible fire. These protective devices are usually mounted in a central panel, most commonly a distribution board or consumer unit, in a building, but some wiring systems also provide a protection device at the socket or within the plug. Residual current devices, also known as ground fault circuit interrupters and appliance leakage current interrupters, are used to detect ground faults, flow of current in other than the neutral and line wires like the ground wire or a person. When a ground fault is detected, the device quickly cuts off the circuit. Topic. Voltage levels Most of Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, New Zealand and most of South America use a supply that is within 6% of 230 V. In the UK and Australia the nominal supply voltage is 230 volts plus 10%, minus 6% to accommodate the fact that most supplies are in fact still 240 V. The United States uses a supply voltage of 120 volts plus or minus 6%, Japan, Taiwan, Saudi Arabia, North America, Central America and some parts of northern South America use a voltage between 100 volts and 127 V. The 230 volt standard has become widespread so that 230 volts equipment can be used in most parts of the world with the aid of an adapter or a change to the equipment's connection plug for the specific country. Topic. Measuring voltage A distinction should be made between the voltage at the point of supply nominal voltage at the point of interconnection between the electrical utility and the user and the voltage rating of the equipment utilization voltage. Typically the utilization voltage is 3% to 5% lower than the nominal system voltage, for example, a nominal 208 volts supply system will be connected to motors with 200 volts on their nameplates. This allows for the voltage drop between equipment and supply. Voltages in this article are the nominal supply voltages and equipment used on these systems will carry slightly lower nameplate voltages. Power distribution system voltage is nearly sinusoidal in nature. Voltages are expressed as root mean square RMS voltage. Voltage tolerances are for steady state operation. 
momentary heavy loads, or switching operations in the power distribution network, may cause short-term deviations out of the tolerance band and storms and other unusual conditions may cause even larger transient variations. In general, power supplies derived from large networks with many sources are more stable than those supplied to an isolated community with perhaps only a single generator. Topic: <laughs> Choice of voltage. The choice of supply voltage is due more to historical reasons than optimization of the electric power distribution system. Once a voltage is in use and equipment using this voltage is widespread, changing voltage is a drastic and expensive measure. A 230 volts distribution system will use less conductor material than a 120 volt system to deliver a given amount of power because the current, and consequently the resistive loss, is lower. While large heating appliances can use smaller conductors at 230 volts for the same output rating, few household appliances use anything like the full capacity of the outlet to which they are connected. Minimum wire size for handheld or portable equipment is usually restricted by the mechanical strength of the conductors. Electrical appliances are used extensively in homes in both 230 volts and 120 volts system countries. National electrical codes prescribe wiring methods intended to minimize the risk of electric shock and fire. Many areas, such as the U.S., which use nominally 120 volts, make use of three-wire, split-phase 240-volt systems to supply large appliances. In this system a 240-volt supply has a center tapped neutral to give two 120-volt supplies which can also supply 240 volts to loads connected between the two line wires. Three phase systems can be connected to give various combinations of voltage, suitable for use by different classes of equipment. Where both single phase and three phase loads are served by an electrical system, the system may be labeled with both voltages such as 120 208 or 234 hundredths of a volt, to show the line to neutral voltage and the line to line voltage. Large loads are connected for the higher voltage. Other three-phase voltages, up to 830 volts, are occasionally used for special-purpose systems such as oil well pumps. Large industrial motors, say, more than 250 horsepower or 150 kilowatts, may operate on medium voltage. On 60 Hz systems a standard for medium voltage equipment is 2,404,160 of a volt 2,304,000 of a volt in the US whereas 3,300 volts is the common standard for 50 Hz systems. <laughs> Standardization. Following voltage harmonization, electricity supplies within the European Union are now nominally 230 volts plus or minus 10% at 50 Hz. For a transition period 1995 to 2008, countries that had previously used 220 volts changed to a narrower asymmetric tolerance range of 230 volts plus 6%, minus 10%, and those like the UK that had previously used 240 volts changed to 230 volts plus 10 percent, minus 6 percent. No change in voltage is required by either system as both 220 volts and 240 volts fall within the lower 230 volts tolerance bands 230 volts plus or minus 6 percent. Some areas of the UK still have 250 volts for legacy reasons, but these also fall within the 10% tolerance band of 230 volts. 
In practice, this allows countries to continue to supply the same voltage 220 or 240 volts, at least until existing supply transformers are replaced. Equipment with the exception of filament bulbs used in these countries is designed to accept any voltage within the specified range. In the United States and Canada, national standards specify that the nominal voltage at the source should be 120 volts and allow a range of 114 volts to 126 volts RMS minus 5% to plus 5%. Historically 110 volts, 115 volts and 117 volts have been used at different times and places in North America. Mains power is sometimes spoken of as 110 volts, however, 120 volts is the nominal voltage. In 2000, Australia converted to 230 volts as the nominal standard with a tolerance of plus 10%, minus 6%, this superseding the old 240 volt standard, AS2926-1987. As in the UK, 240 volts is within the allowable limits and 240 volt is a synonym for mains in Australian and British English. In Japan, the electrical power supply to households is at 100 V. Eastern and northern parts of Honshu including Tokyo and Hokkaido have a frequency of 50 Hz, whereas western Honshu including Nagoya, Osaka, and Hiroshima, Shikoku, Kyushu and Okinawa operate at 60 Hz. The boundary between the two regions contains four back-to-back -back high voltage direct current HVDC substations which interconnect connect the power between the two grid systems, these are Shin Shinano, Sakuma Dam, Manami Fukumitsu, and the Higashi Shimizu frequency converter. To accommodate the difference, frequency-sensitive appliances marketed in Japan can often be switched between the two frequencies. <laughs> History of voltage and frequency The world's first public electricity supply was a water wheel driven system constructed in the small English town of Godalming in 1881. It was an alternating current AC system using a Siemens alternator supplying power for both street lights and consumers at two voltages, 250 volts for arc lamps, and 40 volts for incandescent lamps. The world's first large scale central plant. Thomas Edison's steam-powered station at Hoban Viaduct in London started operation in January 1882, providing direct current DC at 110 V. The Hoban Viaduct station was used as a proof of concept for the construction of the much larger Pearl Street station in Manhattan, the world's first permanent commercial central power plant. The Pearl Street station also provided DC at 110 volts, considered to be a safe voltage for consumers. Beginning September 4, 1882, AC systems started appearing in the U.S. in the mid 1880s, using higher distribution voltage step down via transformers to the same 110 volts customer utilization voltage that Edison used. In 1883 Edison patented a three-wire distribution system to allow DC generation plants to serve a wider radius of customers to save on copper costs. By connecting two groups of 110 volts lamps in series more load could be served by the same size conductors run with 220 volts between them, a neutral conductor carried any imbalance of current between the two sub-circuits. 
AC circuits adopted the same form during the War of Currents, allowing lamps to be run at around 110 volts and major appliances to be connected to 220 V nominal voltages gradually crept upward to 112 volts and 115 volts, or even 117 V. After World War II, the standard voltage in the U.S. became 117 volts, but many areas lagged behind even into the 19th. 1960s. In 1967 the nominal voltage rose to 120 volts, but conversion of appliances was slow. Today, virtually all American homes and businesses have access to 120 and 240 volts at 60 Hz. Both voltages are available on the three wires two hot legs of opposite phase and one neutral. Leg. In 1899, the Berliner Elektrizitätswerke BU, a Berlin electrical utility, decided to greatly increase its distribution capacity by switching to 220 volts nominal distribution, taking advantage of the higher voltage capability of newly developed metal filament lamps. The company was able to offset the cost of converting the customer's equipment by the resulting saving in distribution conductor's cost. This became the model for electrical distribution in Germany and the rest of Europe and the 220 volts system became common. North American practice remained with voltages near 110 volts for lamps. In the first decade after the introduction of alternating current in the U.S. from the early 1880s to about 1893, a variety of different frequencies were used, with each electric provider setting their own, so that no single one prevailed. The most common frequency was 133 and a third hertz. The rotation speed of induction generators and motors, the efficiency of transformers, and flickering of carbon arc lamps all played a role in frequency setting. Around 1893 the Westinghouse Electric Company in the United States and AEG in Germany decided to standardize their generation equipment on 60 Hz and 50 Hz respectively, eventually leading to most of the world being supplied at one of these two frequencies. Today most 60 Hz systems deliver nominal 120 240ths of a volt, and most 50 Hz nominally 230 V. The significant exceptions are in Brazil, which has a synchronized 60 Hz grid with both 127 volts and 220 volts as standard voltages in different regions, and Japan, which has two frequencies, 50 Hz for East Japan and 60 Hz for West Japan. Topic. Voltage regulation To maintain the voltage at the customer's service within the acceptable range, electrical distribution utilities use regulating equipment at electrical substations or along the distribution line. At a substation, the step-down transformer will have an automatic on-load tap changer, allowing the ratio between transmission voltage and distribution voltage to be adjusted in steps. For long several kilometers rural distribution circuits, automatic voltage regulators may be mounted on poles of the distribution line. These are auto transformers, again, with on load tap changes to adjust the ratio depending on the observed voltage changes. At each customer's service, the step down transformer has up to five taps to allow some range of adjustment, usually plus or minus 5% of the nominal voltage. Since these taps are not automatically controlled, they are used only to adjust the long-term average voltage at the service and not to regulate the voltage seen by the utility customer. <laughs> Power quality The stability of the voltage and frequency supplied to customers varies among countries and regions. Power quality 
is a term describing the degree of deviation from the nominal supply voltage and frequency. Short-term surges and dropouts affect sensitive electronic equipment such as computers and flat panel displays. Longer-term power outages, brownouts and blackouts and low reliability of supply generally increase costs to customers, who may have to invest in uninterruptible power supply or standby generator sets to provide power when the utility supply is unavailable or unusable. Erratic power supply may be a severe economic handicap to businesses and public services which rely on electrical machinery, illumination, climate control and computers. Even the best quality power system may have breakdowns or require servicing. As such, companies, governments and other organizations sometimes have backup generators at sensitive facilities, to ensure that power will be available even in the event of a power outage or blackout. Power quality can also be affected by distortions of the current or voltage waveform in the form of harmonics of the fundamental supply frequency, or non-harmonic modulation distortion such as that caused by RFI or ME interference. In contrast, harmonic distortion is usually caused by conditions of the load or generator. In multi-phase power, phase shift distortions caused by imbalanced loads can occur. See also Energy meter <laughs>